What it do y'all and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video I have a heaping style of products that I need to just go ahead and tell you guys my final thoughts. These are all products that I have tested through and through and I truly think that I can tell you whether I love them, hate them, or they're okay. These are all just basically everything except for eyes so lip products cheek products cream and otherwise foundations because i do have a couple of foundations primers stuff like that i will try to take a moment to group everything together but this is going to be ranging quite a far ways back all the way back to like the odin's eye collection so in the event that you have kind of been waiting for my final thoughts on some of those products it will definitely be in this video and this eye look and this whole face tutorial overall was recorded i believe i plan to put it up on saturday so just stay tuned and then actually on friday will be the palette roundup equivalent of this video so i'm going to be trying to push out some really good content this week and i hope you guys enjoy it um and yeah i think that's it let's get into it Alrighty, so we are gonna start from the ready and go to the titty. I literally have stuff all the way from fat primers all the way to tool products. So this is gonna be quite the lengthy video. I will try my absolute best to actually have some timestamps down below for you all, but I am literally recording this Tuesday night. So depending on how quickly my editing and all of that jazz is, it may not be up as soon as 6 a.m. But I will do my absolute best to kind of edit and update my description box when I have the time. So so yeah, let's go ahead and start off with the two face primers that I have to review. The first one is the LYS Secure Skin Gripping Serum Primer. Now this is a primer that I picked up honestly mainly because I got a I believe 50% coupon from the brand because I am a brand ambassador. So. That is really the only reason why I was even halfway in treat and because I already have a gripping primer in my Milk Makeup. Now this one overall I do believe is drastically cheaper than the Milk Makeup even if you don't have such a good discount and I like it. I think it is nice. Do I think it is as gripping as the Milk? No. But in the event that the Milk was too gripping for you, this is definitely a good bang for your buck. I also think that it does decent with controlling my oil when it comes to during the day, but I think it's harder for me to kind of determine that because my skincare has just been so good that a lot of the time I don't find, even if I'm wearing a primer or not, that there really is a huge difference. So yeah, overall though, I do enjoy the primer. I am going to of course get use out of it and finish it, but it's not necessarily a must have if you already have something else that does the same type of product or the same type of technique. Then I have the Milk Makeup and this name is the Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. Now this one I think is totes that it's not only mattifying but also pore blurring as well. And something that I think I didn't talk about when I did the video originally for this is that there's a smell. It is very much like you're not putting any fragrance to cover up the like scientific products in this type of smell. So if that is something that would be jarring to you, don't even play yourself with this. I do appreciate that this comes in a mini and a full size and this one in my hand currently is a mini. I'm very, very happy I picked that up. I don't particularly enjoy this style of primer anymore. It used to be my bread and butter, but now I find that it makes my overall base look super matte and just very, very constricting. But of course, depending on the foundation that you put on top and even honestly, the setting spray that could really change along with, of course, the powder. But for me right now, this is definitely not going to be a go to or something that I would personally recommend, though I am going to keep it in my collection, depending on kind of the arrangement of other products, like I said, that I put on top. I think this could definitely be something that I get use out of. Did it actually blur my pores? Yes, but I also think it was still at the same level as some of my other normal primers that don't actually tote blurring my pores but they still kind of fill them in nonetheless so for me these types of blurring primers really I don't 
see a heightened level to the blurring aspect. Even today, I'm wearing the Patrick Star, what is his brand, one size primer, and I don't really see the elevated look on that type of product. So maybe it's just me. Take that into consideration. If there's somebody who has kind of larger pores or has harder time kind of uh, pushing in product to their pores, maybe they will have a different opinion. But for me, once again, this is just okay. Okay, I'm talking too long and <laughs> we have so many products left. Okay, first foundation I want to talk about is actually from Tula. This is their skincare uh, Radiant Skin Brightening Serum Skin Tint Sunscreen Bod Spectrum SPF 30 Skin Tint. I have this in the shade 25. Now, this isn't actually a recent purchase. I purchased this, I don't even want to say more than a month ago but I'm already ready to review it because I've worn it so often. I have worn it not only just in the room, but I've also worn it out and about with some friends. And I will say for me, this is a really good shade match. I really enjoy it. And for application method, I would either strongly recommend using your fingers or using a brush. Highly do not recommend using a sponge. I just don't think that, that works the best. And especially if you're trying to get that medium to buildable coverage that they tote, definitely recommend your hands or a brush. That said, for me being combination skin, this does give off quite a radiant finish, as I'm sure is attributed to the sunscreen being in this product. And once I set it with my setting spray and even my settings powder, I don't find that this breaks down overly, but this does break down. So this definitely is not going to be the best product in my opinion for somebody who is oily. Somebody who is dry, normal, definitely combination. It depends on the longevity that you're expecting and kind of the coverage and the finish you want. But oily, highly do not recommend. I would definitely say stay away from this product. Next is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This is the foundation that if I, at my current moment, want some like, I want a filtered like look, I honestly, this in their concealer and even the bronzer, I felt like just gave me the most flawless, smooth skin-like base it was insane in my opinion so i definitely would recommend this once again i am an lys ambassador so there are a couple more lys products but i bought all of these with my money maybe at a discounted price but i bought them all with my money so this is me saying it and this brand is actually quite cheap and affordable especially if you're looking at the brands um that are kind of equivalent at sephora so yeah, I really like this. And in case you are a shade twin to me, this is in DN6. And the concealer I have, which is actually under my eyes today, is DN3. And I already told you my primer. And I will be talking about one more product from this brand, I believe, in the future. But yeah, I would recommend this. And once again, as always, if I had to make a choice, I would definitely pick this. Although this is a really good skin tint. But I just think that because of the SPF, it just didn't do what I really, really wanted. And if I had to choose between the two primers, I would choose the LYS. I just don't like the smell or the overall finish of that. Although, like I said, it definitely will keep you matte, but I just find that it's too much for me for where I'm at right now with how I like my base to overall look. Okay, I have quite a few cream base products, so I'm going to try to run through these really quickly. The About Face is a really, really nice clear eyeshadow primer. I actually really like this, and when it was not stuffed in this basket, I was actually reaching for this more than the Natasha Denona, and I find I was doing that because with the Natasha Denona, I could sometimes add too much on my eye, and then it just got really messy, and sometimes in my inner corner, if I didn't blend correctly, especially when I'm doing a tutorial, you can really see it and it just is not appealing. Whereas this product, because it goes on clear and I find it is a drier formula, when I blend it out, it's set. It does itself. Whereas the Natasha Denona, you really have to let it set itself at least a minute or so after you've applied it or really take out the excess amount of product or you're really going to get a weird 
weird look to your eyeshadows when you put them on top so i really really like this this is yet another product from this brand that i would highly recommend and there are a couple others um, that i will be recommending strongly from that brand next i also have another thing from about face in my hands and this is their shadow stick i'm not a huge fan of this product but i definitely think it is nice i would not put this in my waterline it did not last really well with that but it's a decent product if you want it as a base or even as like a liner on the top of your lash line or something like that that said it's not going to be something that i reach for first if we're being honest when it comes to as like a base product but it's nice it works not too terrible but i wouldn't sweat tears if you didn't get to try that formulation then we have the elf no budge cream eyeshadow formula i actually really really like this formula not necessarily for the no budge aspect because I just like it as a nice base it really coats your eyes now once again this is going to be a colored base this is in the shade sand dune and i'm sorry i forgot to say the shadow sticks color it's in pearly so this is a really nice shade i was hoping that this was going to be my perfect kind of base tone like of my shade but this is definitely lighter than my skin tone regardless though i think it is a really nice product and i do think that it kind of does budge if we're being honest but i am notorious for like closing my eyes and opening them before i allow a product to really set so that could be like user error and not necessarily product error also i do find that of course with any form of cream product if you want it to be no budge and it's not naturally just put some setting spray not setting spray some setting powder over it just tap a little bit layer a very very light layer and it will actually do that so for me even if like it has not been budge proof or crease proof it has really been a nice product for me and i actually think i'm gonna pack this for this weekend because i actually am going on like a mini staycation and i think this will be really really nice as a base or an all like one shadow look type situation next we have some cream eyeshadows and unfortunately i love one formula hate the other so this is the formula that i really really love this is from about face and i have it in two shades in the shades new karma and smoke signal i think both of these shades are really really pretty i love smoke signal which is the more greeny shade but the other one is actually really good too this formula is really really nice i didn't have a problem blending it out applying it it does of course have a doe foot in case you did not see my about face um, video and this is definitely a formula that i would love to get more shades i believe at ulta there's no other shades that i really really enjoy or i'm interested in and i just didn't want to make an order from the brand's website again but i would consider it because they have a couple new products that are not on ulta that i'm kind of interested in so yeah regardless highly recommend this and i have only tried the matte formula i think in that particular product they only have the matte formulation then going up against that is this house labs formula this is supposed to be a multi-purpose cream base shadow product i don't like this at all i've tried it any and every way i've tried it as a cream product i've tried it as an eyeshadow or a cream shadow i've tried them as bases i don't like them as bases they dry down too quickly for the shadow to adhere as cream products they're not thick enough and opaque enough to really do anything and as cheek products they really just don't do anything either these were a complete waste of money in my opinion and i do have quite a few friends that are of a lighter complexion so maybe it work for them because i have seen other people get some good use out of them in addition people who maybe don't want something that is so opaque it may work but just for me that dog just ain't hunting it really isn't so i'm gonna go ahead and pass on both of those give them to hopefully a better home okay so i only have two kind of concealer type products to talk about one is from covergirl and this is their true undercover concealer i have it in the shade natural tan this is actually a really good concealer i would say definitely high medium to full coverage really like the color um, on me although originally i thought it was going to be too light it actually blends well with my foundation and it doesn't look too stark once i've set it with my powder so i really like this concealer definitely would recommend if you want to stay in the drugstore realm of things is this equate to my lys no but it's really really nice i forgot if i had to recommend a form 
formula that I prefer for my shadow sticks. Definitely the fluid paints and then of course the actual eyeshadow primer, both from About Face. And the other concealer type product that I have is the Duo from Sigma, where you have a corrector and then the actual concealer. I think this is fine, it's nice. It's definitely not a go-to for me and it's not as much as a love to me as it is for Laura May Beauty, but I think our base aesthetics are different. So that's probably why. So if I had to choose which one I would choose kind of to recommend, I would actually recommend the CoverGirl more. Then we have brow products. So I have two brow pencils. One is from Rowan and I have this in the shade dark and it is not dark. It is quite light. I have applied it to my brows multiple times and it just has a very weird undertone. I just don't like it. It's very, very apparent when I put this in my brows and it's just, it's just not a love for me. Thankfully, I was able to only spend $5 on this and thankfully I can use this in the front of my brows and it doesn't attract too much attention, but I definitely would not recommend this for somebody who is kind of a brow pencil twin with me. Just definitely don't recommend it. Then we have the Benefit Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil. This is quite a new product and I was able to get it fairly recently or right after it launched and do a video. And I got this in the shade 4.5. I love this product. I think this product is a really, really nice shade for me, but also I like that it does not take a lot of the product to actually get my brows done. So I think that this brow pencil will last me an extremely long amount of time. And for me, this is one of those products I don't really care to like venture and try a lot of. I just have been buying a lot of different brands because they're all pretty cheap and I just needed a brow product to put in my brows basically. But now that I've tried this, I'm gonna kind of gear towards this after I've kind of flushed out all of the other ones or kind of use this in tandem. And I really like the shade. It's not as dark as like maybe traditionally I would pick up, but I really like the shade once the full brow is kind of done. Then I have one cream bronzer and then one powder bronzer. The cream bronzer is the last LYS product I want to talk to you guys about today. And this is in the shade Strength. So earlier, I believe the last roundup, I talked about the shade Courage and I said that it pretty much blended in. I didn't like this. This is the shade if you are my complexion and or deeper. This is the shade Strength. I believe there is one shade deeper than this. And I do love this formula. This is an extremely blendable formula. Very seamless and skin like and because of that it just seamlessly blends in with their serum foundation and also with their concealer I have of course used this with other base foundations and concealers and I still think this does a beautiful job so I would highly recommend this if you are somebody who finds that you have difficulty blending your cream bronzers really check this out. I definitely think that that would be something to spend your money on. And once again, it's not very expensive. I think I want to say it's like $15, which is not bad. Then I have the bronzer from Jaclyn Cosmetics, and this is in Bare Babe. This is, I believe, her latest bronzer range. And I got this because I was intrigued. I had been hearing some good things about her previous range, and I figured go ahead and get it. Now, I think the shade is a decent shade, not a favorite but a really good shade for me that said I'm not in love with this formula I think this formula is okay but it's just not something that really speaks out to me and kind of is something that I need to stop drop and roll just to touch you know so it is something like if you could get this on a really wicked discount and you really just want a bronzer that you can just rock with for a significant amount of time there's quite a bit of product in there there is 7.93 grams so that's quite the hockey puck worth of product but at the same time it's really not nothing to write home about and it is a matte finish in the event that um, you only like more kind of skin like finishes it is quite matte in my opinion not a hard matte but it's matte nonetheless okay so we have cheek products next let's go ahead and do powder highlighters because that's the actual area that I have the most of and first let's talk about the about face highlighter this is in light lock this is a beautiful formula there is definitely a slight shimmer running throughout this and it will be slightly seen on the skin but really you can't really see it it really just blends in beautifully I think this shade is really really nice it is like this orangey kind of um 
pinky shift situation on my skin and i really really like it and yeah i like it is it like a must-have no but i have it so i am very very happy to then i have this baby from fenty beauty and this is in cognac candy i picked this up from like a boxy charm boxy charm sale that i was able to um, access because i don't have a membership with them and i think this is okay i have been lusting after this for so long that when i was able to get this for like ten dollars i figured let's just go ahead it's okay it's cute i honestly think i prefer the white version um which is what how many carrots but i like it i'm happy i have it it is what it is the two that i definitely think check her out okay check them out are the two highlighters from odin's eye so i must have already reviewed the blushes in the previous roundup but just forgot to review these and these are two very unique but beautiful colors so this one is rose sky and this one is warm sunshine i prefer warm sunshine if we're being honest it's just a beautiful and unique highlighter it is toted to be kind of like this yellow orangey shift situation and i really do think that you kind of do get that and i love that i love it so much and for me because it's so unique and i love yellow in general it just works a lot of course the packaging is phenomenal if you guys want to see a review video where i kind of showcase the whole collection in all of its glory check out my channel i already have that uploaded a while ago but yeah i really like those and from the highlighters i honestly check those out then we have a cream blush from rem beauty and this is in curtain call it's a beautiful bright orangey blush this definitely is one of those blushes you need to use a brush with i tried to use a sponge when i originally tested it out it did not work and i also didn't particularly enjoy it with a finger definitely would recommend a sponge or a brush but i don't also just love this formula it is quite of a matte finish there's not any real life coming from this finish so i like it i'll use it but i would love something that gives me a little bit more oomph then we have competing with that the patrick ta she's baked blush duo i love this i love this so much and trying this formula with this actual color i now know what everybody was raving about with the previous color i think it was just too light for my skin tone and i just could not get the hype i really couldn't but i decided to take the chance i believe like the last vib sale or something and i love it i love it so much and it clearly it's taken me a very long time to get around to testing it out but I'm very very happy that i did and i actually really would recommend this the other cream blush that i have to talk about is kind of a hybrid and this is a face palette from natasha denona this is actually really really nice so these two are creams and then you have like two kind of glittery highlighter blush topper situations this is phenomenal nice and deep pigmented really really nice it does give you quite a sheen though so do keep that in mind and don't be stupid like me and try to top off with one of these to kind of set that don't do it don't do it but i think overall it really creates a very beautiful seamless blush cheek look and that's really what she wanted from this palette so i actually really really do enjoy that last for the cheek products i have a highlighter stick and this is from about face and this is now i believe the second highlighter stick that i actually truly enjoy i think that this applies well regardless if you are just painting it onto your face or if you are applying it with your finger a brush anything i think this works really well i wouldn't recommend applying it with a sponge but you can get it done um and i have tried this above and under powder so definitely enjoy that product um and i didn't say the shade this one is in the shade light lock no reluctance so this is the shade that i enjoy i believe there was no other shade or i probably would have already picked it up if we're being honest we're rounding out we're rounding out okay for lip products i have three different actual products that i want to talk about so first is a lip liner from about face this is in the shade clockwork i think this is a decent formula although it's extremely creamy and it doesn't really hold on the lips 
all that much it's a nice little base in the event that you just want to layer this under something but if you expect this to last all day definitely don't play yourself also if you're in my skin tone this is not dark enough this is pretty much my skin tone which isn't a bad thing but it's something to know and so if you are somebody who wants something that's slightly deeper to really kind of line the lips and get them to kind of pop a little bit more off your face don't get this particular shade but the formula is not terrible I've gone through lip liners with a very similar formula so I'm sure I will go through that line lip liner as well then I also tried the NYX Shine Loud um, Lip Duo in Boundary Pusher, I believe. Um, and I really like this. I love this product. It really does work. I really, really enjoy it. Obviously, it doesn't like, it can't battle like oil, olive oil and stuff like that. But it does last and it lasts with that nice sheen. For me, I didn't find that the sheen was like, perfect right so it definitely does dull over time but overall you still get like a permanent or semi-permanent glossy lip look which is really really nice so very very happy to have tried that unfortunately that was the only shade that i would get any use out of from the range right now but i'm very happy to have that and then the last one is actually another nyx product and this is their milk gloss and this is in the shade milk it cocoa i think this is fine it is very much a brown with like a white haze over it kind of and i think it works beautifully um so yeah it's a normal gloss i mean it's just a nice color and it gives you that effect without you having to do kind of a lot of extra leg work so I also bought some lashes from Unearthly. I got these in the shade or the style Divine. I thought these would be kind of a style for me. I don't particularly like these. These are very, very lightweight lashes. And don't get me wrong, I think that in some cases lightweight lashes are good, but I am so used to a tougher band that I have a lot of difficulty with these and I just am not about them. I also don't particularly enjoy the actual style now that I've seen them. I now know that I really enjoy the style of my Miamis where it's kind of fluttery, middle kind of tier of a flutter. These kind of look quite natural on my eyes and I even get that um, impressions from people who see me in real life. So for me, these just aren't it and I probably will not buy another pair, but it honestly just depends on kind of your personality and your technique and what you're used to, whether you would like these or not. They just per they just aren't for me. Okay, so now we're moving on to tools. And first I kind of wanna talk about the Sydney Grace brushes so i did not pick up the whole set but i did pick up a nice arrangement of brushes both in the face category and in the eye category and what i will say is these are fantastic quality i really like the quality these are synthetic hair in the event that you are natural uh, cruelty free or even um vegan these should be good to go i love the ferrule i love the angulant i love everything about them the one thing i don't particularly enjoy is that they aren't labeled i don't appreciate that and i think it's harder for me as a customer to say that i particularly love this tech this style and to know which one it is because they do have like most brush kind of ranges brushes that look similar but are maybe just a different size like maybe one smaller than the other and so because these aren't labeled the actual brushes it's harder for me to kind of get the urge to go back and purchase them but otherwise i like the shapes i've gotten use out of all of them and i can't wait now to kind of clean these off along with all of my brushes so that i can then you know move forward and have some fun with these because these really did seamlessly go into kind of my workhorse brushes that i just reach for on an everyday basis because the shapes really do align with the shapes that i enjoy and they're nice and heavy. They're not like flimsy and like easy to like flick away. So on the other side of things, we have the unearthly brushes. And these definitely, if you're comparing them to the Sydney Grace, I don't know if I would say they feel lighter, but they just don't, the vibes aren't as like nice. You know, I don't know how to say that, but either way, I 
they're okay they are very very small brushes so if you're somebody who has a small hooded eye or just small eyes in general i definitely would say reach for these or kind of look at this range before you look at sydney grace but i don't I don't know i just don't feel like these are going to hold up as much as the sydney grace are that's what i want to say they just they're cute i love the feral i love the design on the handle but i just don't think they're going to hold up in addition the actual handle is smaller so as you can see pretty much my fan eats this brush up and don't get me wrong i have decent sized hands i'm decently tall so it just comes with the territory but you know okay like think of like a travel size brush this is pretty much a travel size brush there you go so these are travel size these are normal size and the last but certainly not least is a product that i had so many people going to the website for I don't know if it's in stock again, but it's my sponge. It's the sponge from About Face. This little thing, this little thing has been a workhorse for me until I had to put her in that basket to remember to review her. I love this product. I have used this product now for cream highlighter, cream blush, cream bronzer, applying foundation, applying concealer, applying powder. Although I don't mind it applying powder, but it's not a love. It's not a hate, it's just not a love. Um, and the one kind of downside is there's not as much surface as maybe a sponge. So you really have to like be careful or kind of choose the products that you're going to use to use this to apply and i have kind of gotten used to using the back as well to kind of get the products for whatever it is but i do like this i do so hopefully <laughs> hopefully that's available on the website because otherwise i would have driven people to that website again and it's not available i'm sorry guys um so yeah the last couple of categories i forgot to say which i would prefer per usual definitely the tasha denona balloon palette um as for lips i actually would say go for this baby you get two in one which is nice you get that liquid lipstick and the lip gloss love it as for the tools workhorse duh so yeah that's all i got for you guys today i hope you guys enjoyed this video this was a long one but i hope it was helpful hopefully next time i won't wait so long to do a roundup and then the products won't be as many either way though i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you guys in my next video which should be friday which i should be uploading my ranking or roundup for my palettes that i have tested out in the last couple of months so i'll see you guys then bye guys